In this hour, we are going to talk about profiling corruption scandals from the Moi regime into the Kibaki regime into the Uhuru regime. We'll be joined by journalist John Alan Namu, but we'll also be joined by Wajiro Ekonyo from the Institute for Social Accountability. Before Wajiro says hello, let's hear the Egyptian proverb, which is from Egypt. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And just to be sure. Some profound things. I know. Yeah. Very observant. <laughs> <laughs> the worst things to be in bed and sleep not, to want for one who comes not, or to try to please and please not. Worst things to be in bed and sleep not, to want for one who comes not, or to try to please and please not. Where? Eh. Is there anything worse than that? Are things getting worse? <laughs> I can imagine there's a number of people who are in bed who are not getting sleep mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on account of recent events mm -hmm. and they did not get what they wanted. Mm -hmm. They wanted and got not. Mm -hmm. I, I missed the last part. This is a very deep proverb. Trying to please and please not. Yeah, well... This one needs a lot of reflection. Where is City? <laughs> <laughs> Charles, please. Charles. Charles. Oh, Charles. Excuse oh, me. Sir Charles. <laughs> yes. You know, doing the royal Not Sir business. Charles. King, King Charles. Oh, I see. Mm. I see. Even as we have our own royalty. Yes. Please. <laughs> King Charles mm. has taken a couple of days off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right. There are many events going on. Oh, yes. He can also have his moment. Yes. And in his absence, here I am. Mm. Mm. <laughs> what you know, how are you? Hard. I'm fine. Uh -huh. mm. I'm fine. And under I'm happy under to the be circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. I did not qualify. Who asked you, you know to qualify you say about for people me? who say I'm fine? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. What? No, that means don't ask me any. <laughs> Leave me alone. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> if you go beyond that <laughs> now. <laughs> We make Kosana. <laughs> I'm fine means just well, you are, leave me alone. Uh, yes, up to there. <laughs> we we'll see Peter Hapo. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm dealing with my issues. I'm managing my situation. So, <laughs> enough. <laughs> John Alan Namu. Yes. From African Censored. Good morning. You, how are you? I am breathless. <laughs> <laughs> John Alan, yes. you haven't heard there's a thing called the expressway that we are oh paying my gosh. for for the next how many years? You know, Might I well come from it. the wrong side of the expressway. Oh, so, I see. So I was coming using a bypass from Magadi Road and mm. the traffic was proper gagna gagna it was it was really packed oh really yeah yeah on so, the southern bypass no 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 magadi road on magadi road yeah itself. magadi road then one, once i got onto the bypass it was easy so mm. i think i'm just now a bit breathless and panicked that i came i came late this morning my apologies wow. good to see you wanjiro good, good to see yeah, you breath. too yeah and yes. of course to, to the both of you of course <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, oh, yes thank you john great to see you <laughs> Yeah. Here we have so John Alan Assange is here. Because <laughs> <laughs> we have our own Assange. We have our own Assange. Uh, Who has his work cut out? Yes. <laughs> given yeah. recent events. Please, can can your prayers end there? We're just with the name. You know where Assange is now, eh? yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 nothing else. Yeah. Huh? Uh, uh, but uh, <laughs> he's here because of some work that African Sense that has done, and uh, they have unleashed. A dossier called the WYSILICS. <laughs> Is it a dossier really? Yeah. But okay, yeah. Thank, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. You'll take it. Yeah, we'll yeah, continue. Yeah. But before we go into WYSILICS, yes. you recently had a conversation with the Director General of the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority. Mm. Uh, IPRA has been very busy. Of course, every 14th, that is the busy day for IPRA. Oh, yeah. Now with the new administration coming in, they had to have a busy day with the new administration. Mm. Uh, coming in with a new shift in policy with regards to the fuel subsidy, which mm -hmm. basically is a fuel harambe that we mm. contribute to, and then we take the money from the kitty. Yeah. What did he tell you? Well, he told me essentially that um, the stabilization fund is uh, is close to empty, mm. and the stabilization fund is is a euphemism essentially for a subsidy, mm. right? So um, the stabilization fund is is money that's raised through taxes and other means. Um, to be able to ameliorate the price of um, of fuel when it gets too expensive, when the international shocks, etc. But now, over the sustained period from you know mid 2021, 
um, going into now the war in the war in Ukraine and and some of the and then of course the value of the shilling against the dollar having impacted um, how much we can spend on fuel we've spent a lot of money and mm. oil marketers so this party hasn't told me mm. but this I know from other sources that um, the government owes oil marketers quite a bit of money and think about it this way if you're if you're not one of the big four big five oil marketers and you have a credit facility of say 200 million for product mm. and the subsidy doesn't come in to pay that amount mm. then you're in a lot of trouble yeah and and so what that could mean you know if if it's not managed properly is that not only will um, kenyans be under pressure um, but oil marketers themselves, the smaller ones, and going also to the bigger ones, yep. will also be under pressure to keep their businesses afloat. So um, he 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 was of the very balanced views that uh, view that subsidies are not a good thing, mm. but they are necessary in various times. Mm. Um, but they can't. I don't think it's sustainable. And the advice that I think the EPRA is going to be giving is, you know feed it bit by bit mm. remove the subsidy bit by bit mm. and hopefully as um, as prices of of um, of uh, crude trend downwards as they have been um, we'll meet somewhere in the middle where once the subsidy is completely removed yeah. then the price of uh, the price of uh, fuel has also you know gone down but mm. that doesn't seem to be happening you heard what opec was saying mm -hmm. that the prices have fallen low enough mm -hmm. and so meaning that we could be seeing now another upward trend especially yep. going into the fall going into winter in uh, in in europe and other parts mm. and of course the war in ukraine is still raging so the price has dropped uh in terms of global price global mm -hmm. global crude for the product that we're gonna we're gonna be consuming for the next one month yeah however the price uh, at the pump has gone up because yes of various factors what are those factors so there's a 45 day time lag mm. between the um the the price falling internationally and us feeling it here mm. um that you know is for various reasons um import logistics etc um, um, and what that means is that it's not going to translate now, perhaps a little later, mm. perhaps with the next few shipments of oil over the next 45, you know, to 60 days, mm. then we'll see a slight decrease. So maybe next month there might be a slight decrease. Mm. There might be, right? Mm. But then if you see prices trending upwards again, you know that that's temporary, right? Yeah. So so that's that's possibly what's going to happen. So it's not that the government has shikiliad somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's just that the, 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 the product hasn't reached, that the cheaper product hasn't reached. Hasn't reached the market yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So subsidy removed on super petrol, yeah. subsidy retained for diesel and mm -hmm. kerosene. Mm -hmm. But uh, all indications are it's a step-by-step. Step. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're heading towards zero complete removal of subsidy yeah and hopefully then also complete removal of the petroleum development levy well um i think that's that's something for <laughs> this new administration to think about mm. um one of the things that uh, that uh, mr kipto was talking about was uh, look we we might want to think about taxes that can be withdrawn from time to time mm. mm -hmm. but there's an opportunity cost to that mm. right so um the energy sector <coughs> contributes a lot of money in tax revenue to the government and the government needs every shilling mm. so if they remove that then they are foregoing something else somewhere yep. i think we're really in a in a catch-22 situation here where debt is you know where where i think this year and next year, Wanjiri will correct me if I'm wrong, we are paying the highest amounts of, um, mm. of uh, the highest amounts of our repayments will happen this year and next year. Mm -hmm. A lot of um, observers of Kenya have been saying that if there's a year to default, it will be either be this year or next, or next year. year. Um, and if we're finagling our taxes like that, then, you know, um, it's going to be tough. It's, it's a really fine line to walk. Um, yeah. Yeah, it is a fine line, and of course, if you look at the manifesto, yes. what um, uh, the incoming administration has said is that they want to deal with regressive taxation mm -hmm. because they recognise that um, taxation is impacting the lower income in, uh, um, disproportionately. Mm -hmm. That means they may be looking at, you know. Mm -hmm. things like uh, it will be the excise taxes the vat taxes they mm -hmm. may look at some aspects of that uh fuel levy um it is a fine line mm -hmm. but 
on the other hand, if we if we think about why we are in this kind mm. of uh, uh, tax uh, burden, t tax hole, it's because of runaway expenditure. Mm. A lot of which was, you know, really misinformed, mm -hmm. not well targeted. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, waste. Yeah. There's a lot of corruption. So the thing to watch is what they're going to do with the supplementary budget. That's true. And where they will move the money from and to. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, we hope they'll have clear, um, dis, um, impartial mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, a, a good balancing of issues. Yeah. Because if you think back to 2020, when both supply and demand crashed, and there was then a reprieve in terms of pay as you earn, and of mm. course, um, the, the VAT, that allowed people to survive. Mm. And there's a, a, a sense in which the economy was able to keep running mm. because we weren't overtaxed. So mm. Kenyans are overtaxed, mm. and we need a reprieve, and that means cutting back on the expenditure True. and reallocating. True. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, and by a fine line, I, I really don't think that the Ruto administration has the luxury to even start to think about, <laughs> you know... Stealing anything. It's not, not even stealing, yeah. just even misappropriation. All right. Of course, there are people who are going to come in there and say, hey, Sai, now it's our time. Mm. Mm. Um, those are the ones who have to be held at bay, if not completely kept away from any any access to whatever whatever resources the government has mm. and and i agree one zero i think i think um we are overtaxed mm. especially the 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 population of people who are being taxed mm. um both in a formal informal in, uh, employment but also informally we really need to think about how how we're going to be able to balance that and and i hope that this is front of mind for for the the ruto administration mm. honestly. clearly yeah. it's only for us to see i mean i mm. uh, said earlier we had asked him this question during the presidential debates yeah and on the issue of fuel prices and the cost of living and he had talked about you know there's some some of these levies and taxes that mm. are imposed on fuel need to be reviewed mm. and so we asked him so what is the way forward? Mm -hmm. And guess what his answer, what his answer was? Mm -hmm. Enough is enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that was a set up yeah, question. Yeah. <laughs> he, he said that they are going to look at, I mean, look at uh, how much the landing cost is mm. and how much is going in terms of fuel and, and, and levies mm. and see where do you strike a balance mm. even if you remove the subsidy. So what else do you do to make it affordable for people to keep moving for the economy to keep yeah. um, being energized i think i think the one the, the biggest asset that a kenyan will have today is their calculator app on their phone because mm. these yeah. kinds of levies and stuff are going to impact you in such a real way that you're going to have to be ca calculating literally on the go mm. what how to be able to use the money that you the, that you have yeah. mm. you know um it's weird it's a weird time that we're in Completely. Yes. Mm. So African Censor has been doing some work, mm -hmm. uh, which is looking at all corruption scandals that have been recorded mm -hmm. or reported mm -hmm. since the Moi days mm. to the Kibaki days to the Uhuru days. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that project. So um, we've been challenged by members of the public mm. to start thinking about how differently we're going to report corruption and one of the things that um, many people have been frustrated by is that when when a, a new scandal hits the headline mm. they come in like floods and waves and you almost can't keep up you feel like you're drowning mm -hmm. um in in under the the weight of every new scandal mm. uh, and so the one thing that we wanted to do the, the two things actually that we've been trying to work on mm. number one is to explain how corruption actually works in different sectors of, of society and that's um now now that predates um WYSILIX. that's in our explainer um stories that we've been doing mm. so how you know goods are smuggled ac across the border how that impacts you how cdf is stolen how that impacts you mm. even how and and we try to look at corruption broadly even how um votes are you know how voters are, in, are disenfranchised and how that impacts you mm. because we recognize that without 
people understanding what the system that underpins corruption is, then they'll always be limited to just complaining about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then now comes WYSIWYGS. So WYSIWYGS was a fairly ambitious project. And, and it, I have to say here, it is still a work in progress. Mm -hmm. um, you don't build an app and say it's complete. It's not like a car. You know, you have to keep building. Mm. And, and what we wanted to do is to tell Kenyans, okay, fine. In as much as corruption exists, I think we have to understand just how far back this chain of corruption reaches, mm. how each administration has measured against the other in terms of corruption, misappropriation of funds, and, and something now a little deeper than that, why each administration seems to be getting worse and worse, mm. right, with some reprieves in between, mm. because... Um, as a good, uh, you know, uh, colleague um, on these Twitter streets, one dear enjoyer likes to say, mm. and which is true, corruption is systemic. And so if there's anything that people should read from WYSIWYGS, it's not so much that, oh, Uhuru compares worse than the other, even though that's fairly obvious. Mm. It is that corruption is systemic, it's long running, and it's embedded in the way we do things, especially in the public sphere. Now, it is not only the public space that has corruption mm. if anything there's a very strong nexus between private and public mm. corruption mm. but what we chose to do in our methodology was to look first at public corruption um, and the methodology looked at uh, media reports um, looked at uh, reports from the ethics and anti-corruption commission and its predecessor mm. uh, the office of the auditor general um, the odpp um, and the documentation that has come out, as well as, like I said, media reports and, and other, you know, commissions and audits that, that have taken place in the past. Mm -hmm. So perhaps to, to preempt a question, why not since 63? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we could even ask why not since 1895? Mm -hmm. Because corruption has happened even in the colonial regime and there have been records of that. Um, and my, my very simple, perhaps not as satisfying answer is that we... The, the kind of search terms that we're using to crawl this data um, gave us richer data sets from 78 onwards mm. as opposed to 63. Now, 63 is much, from 63 to 78, that's much more laborious. Like, mm. you have to go through it physically. And that will do over time um, as we deepen the data set that we have. So, long answer, but I hope you have your, your response, Eric. So, yeah. it's not necessarily mm -hmm. the amount of corruption in a mm. regime mm -hmm. it is the amount of corruption that has been recorded yes in a regime mm -hmm. yes it is what you find in public records exactly there could have been some corruption that was not recorded yes but uh, you it, you just miss it mm. so could this also be an indication like mm -hmm. you say uh, uhuru's a, appears to be more than mm -hmm. kibaki's appears mm -hmm. to be more than moi's and all mm -hmm. is it because of also the openness of the society for sure there are many things that have happened, um, especially in the advent of the, the 2010 constitution, mm. that have allowed for more openness um, in analyzing the country's resources and the country's spending. The, the office of the Auditor General has be, had become very vocal um, um, with, with um, its reports becoming, you know, something of uh, public fodder for discussion. Yeah. Um, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, as well as the Office of the, the Directorates of Public Prosecutions. Those are people who've been a lot more forthright than they had been even in the Kibaki days um, in terms of looking at corruption. Then mm. we have other agencies, the Asset Recovery Agency. And and I'd say this is, this is the benefit and the beauty of having um, freer, press mm. than we did in the kibaki days in the moi days and even to an extent in the in uh, you know in the early uhuru days mm. so yes they'll they'll obviously be that but you also have to remember that the budgets were smaller mm. um back then mm -hmm. you yeah. know in the moi days and the, i think kibaki was it in 2007 that we had our first one trillion shilling budget mm -hmm. right so it's the trillion shilling phase of our growth isn't that old uh, and and so that would mean that there'd be more to steal. We have mm -hmm. to look at the three percent. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> even yeah. even though uh, John, yeah. even as you say that, yeah. your data doesn't yes. uh, support that because um, the budget may be bigger. Mm -hmm. But then you're talking about 120 scandals during the Uhuru regime. Yes. 41 scandals during the Kibaki regime. Mm. So you'd imagine if 
you know, we had, unless there's a case of underreporting, mm-hmm. it just shows that the appetite, something happens, yeah. that the, there was more theft. And then, of course, the amounts are astronomical. It, it's both and, yes. right? So, so there's, there was a lot more openness. Mm-hmm. But let's be honest, we've just been speaking about, you know, the way we've been spending mm-hmm. um, on projects that don't have any legs. And what happens with that, you know? Um, look, look for instance at our pending bills right now. Mm-hmm. If you scratched just beneath the surface, you would find that very many of them, both at county level and at national level, are fictitious. Are mm-hmm. fraudulent. They're fraudulent. And they're people who are waiting to be paid for it's work that they have not do. done, mm-hmm. right? And especially at this time, it is criminal. Mm-hmm. But you, you, it, it's true, Anjiro. Um, there's something that shifted mm. with the advent of the Uhuru, Uhuruto government. Mm. There's something that completely changed. And you see, like, if you there look at the data, mm. I'm telling you. Well, One of the things that changed. It did change, yes, but, but more avenues. A but lot of this, this, this <laughs> corruption is at the national level, level. as right. well. Mm. Yeah. Because you know. the amounts of, that counties are getting yeah. mm. compared to the national budget, you're mm. talking about, um, it's about 17% of yeah. the overall budget going to counties. Yeah. Mm. So yes, maybe more opportunities may yes. add to the numbers, but the quantum yeah. has something to do with the nature of the regime. Mm. Leadership matters. That's I know, true. but I'm also saying, mm-hmm. you see now you're talking about 48 administrations. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. 48 and admi- oh, no. oh yes, yes, yes. well counties and mm-hmm. national yes. 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 yes i was like 48 yeah. well, yeah. like which, country? Country? which country which country is this yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> welcome welcome <laughs> to the world as welcome to the conversation yeah. <laughs> 48 administrations 48 yeah. executives yes uh rolling and managing budgets mm-hmm. 48 opportunities mm. for different people to actually now come up with scandals. Mm-hmm. So if you look at a scandal, a scandal in Mombasa and a scandal in Kuala and a scandal in Kilifi, those are mm. three different scandals mm. completely unrelated mm-hmm. from dif- three different uh, budget sources. Yeah. As opposed to pre-2013, 20, 20, mm. where all of those would have come from one ministry, mm. then just being distributed. So you'll call it one, mm-hmm. you'll call it one road scandal in the coast. Mm. which will cover Kilifi Mombasa Kwale. Mm. But now you'll call it three different road scandals mm-hmm. in Kilifi Mombasa Kwale. Yeah, but three that are much, much smaller. Yes. Right? Yeah. Versus the, let's, look, you have a beautiful edifice to what inflation of, of uh, budgets uh, can look like mm. right outside the window over here at the standard group, the expressway. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? Compare the cost of the expressway mm. to the cost of a road a country, a county road, a 27 kilometer county yeah, road mm-hmm. in Machako, so somewhere else. Mm-hmm. The, the, we're talking about completely different leagues of corruption, and this is not to say that the counties should be excused or are excused mm-hmm. from from um, from the, the crimes that have taken place. That definitely, I think, the, the thing with the counties is that it's more painful because mm-hmm. the, the resources are much closer um, to the members of the public. But if you look at the amounts. It's definitely much, much bigger mm. here. Mm. But but it speaks to, I think, the general problem that we have with misappropriation, both at, at national county and county, and county. Yeah, like, so like, maybe WikiLeaks mm. yeah. could do that. Wizzy, um, disaggregate. Wizzy, oh, WizzyLeaks. Oh, yes, sorry. Yes, yes. WizzyLeaks could, yes. uh, yes. yeah. could disaggregate national yes. to county. It's that also true. been captured, by the way, on uh, the scandals in County 49. Mm-hmm. Because County 49 has some serious, serious scandal. Money came from the national government went to County 049, and all of it was misappropriated. You haven't seen it? No. County I'm, show. Like, oh, and show, I'm like, oh, oh okay. I was, I was like, is it, are you talking about the show, Max? <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, okay. okay. It exists. Okay. Yes, yes, Need yes. to watch County 49. Yeah. That actually exists. True. Yes, yeah. please True. write it with your pink green. pen. <laughs> the, the pink green, one. The, the pink the, pen, The pink please. pen. Yeah. Okay, this what pink. What color is that? <laughs> but, but I mean, in, in all seriousness, yeah. that's, that's where we're going next. Mm. Um, we... Like I said, this is a work in progress. Mm. So what we want to do is to try and deepen and deepen and deepen the, the data set so that if there's someone in Kachaliba um, mm. who's interested in what's happening in, in their county, yeah. then they'd be able to go and check and see, okay, fine, this this project um, 
um, you know, there was money that was allocated for this project and mm. it's been mis misappropriated. And that gives uh, people, I think, a, a bit more agency yeah. to go and now tell the governors and tell the, the MCAs that, look, you're not shepherding our resources properly. Mm. That, that's essentially the goal. We cannot... And, and I, if, if there's anything that I hope that Kenyans will take away from WYSIWYGS, it's not that we're trying to target Uhuru mm. over Kibaki, over... You, you understand? Yeah. We are just trying to make our governments more accountable. And we can't sit back and complain anymore. We don't have that luxury. If yeah. we complain, everything will be taken. And we then must, what will we complain about? We must about? have the data. Yeah. If, you know, if you want to know what we're talking about, you can go to africancensored.online. Mm -hmm. You will find WYSILICS by African Censored, the CEO and founder, John Alan Namu yes. is <laughs> is in the studio here with us. Yeah. And of course, if you also want to know what we're talking about, County 49, go to Showmax for mm -hmm. as little as 760 bob a month. Mm -hmm. Watch all the episodes. Episode 4 comes out today, Thursday, okay. the 15th of September. I'll, I'll, take, you up on, I'll take you up yeah. on that. You actually. should. Yes. Yeah. Right. Back shortly after this break. This is The Situation Room. The only way to start your day. Eric Latif and Ndu Oko King Charles is away for a couple of days. He'll be back uh, hopefully after next week. Mm. Wanjiro Yekonya from the Institute for Social Accountability and John Alan Assange now who is here with us. <laughs> you call this thing WikiLeaks. So you... WikiLeaks. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you could have called it Ofisadi. Uh, then you'd have remained John Alan. John Nam. Alan. Uh, now, with Wizzy, he'll become <laughs> Assange. So... <laughs> and, Okay, so I mean, yeah. one of the things that you've said through all of this is that, look, looking at the different administrations mm. and under that, uh, these numbers that we are now seeing mm. with this report, I mean, obviously, again, not an onslaught on President Uhuru Kenyatta's um, mm. administration, but just saying, look, this is it. You've also mentioned that there's an appetite for corruption amongst the private, in the private sector as mm. well. So it's not just public, but it's, mm. it is that it is systemic being able to understand mm -hmm. because i often say okay yeah, so here we are this big boom of an it's an issue corruption yeah. is an issue yeah. but then how are we going to get to the point whereby we say look it is all right to then call it out but at the same time a deeper understanding mm -hmm. of what could happen mm -hmm. with these funds mm -hmm. that are lost to corruption that's a that's a great question Ndu. Mm -hmm. um and i think that's not just for us to do but i think for everybody who's looking at the issue to to start to appreciate and you know we've we've done comparators before so 140 million shillings stolen could have built um like what uh, the outgoing governor of makweni built the, the 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 hospital for mother and child the mother and child, child hospital yeah. i think it could cost 140 million shillings if you, if you go there then and or if we take our cameras there people might appreciate that better but I think there's something also to be said for 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 not just comparing so that we can see what's been built, but looking at the numbers themselves and trying to ask ourselves then, okay, there might be a deeper problem with our systems, mm. you know, as opposed to just, you know, thinking about how the money could have been spent. I think we, sh we need to think about what is the system that allows for, for these kinds of things to happen. I, I mean, it's completely valid to say that, yes, these things could have been built in this way. But where we are right now, we have to completely unpick where the problems are, where the leakages are, and fix what our system, you know, fix this system or throw it out. Mm. Yeah. That's the point at okay. which we so are. So even as you deliberate on that, now mm. looking at this, I mean, clearly, sorry, but, you know, 10 is a big number of scandals, but we're yeah. looking at in the hundreds. Yeah. How then did you analyze to the point whereby you said, okay, so this was a scandal, this was an issue. Mm -hmm. Was it that, all right, some fellow's been found with 150 million shillings in his account and he earns 22 million and he could be part mm -hmm. of a racket? Is that what we're talking about? Or then how did you get this okay. information for it them to be deemed a scandal? Good question. Um, so what, we're, what we try to do is look at various sources of information yeah. that, that have specific words relating to corruption. So corruption scandal, court cases that that um, 
in which corruption is being tried. So the, the anti-corruption court, for instance, was a big source for us. Uh -huh. We also looked at uh, published works, uh, books of people who've done research on corruption. Mm -hmm. There have been um, non-governmental organizations, inter international institutions that, that have various means through which they try and express what corruption is. Mm -hmm. um, then, of course, there are the official sources of, um, you know, in government, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, which has a very clear definition of what um, amounts to a scandal mm -hmm. or amounts to misappropriation, etc. So there are these various ways that we tried to look at that. Um, I, I don't know if we have, we had one way of mm -hmm. saying, okay, so this is what it means. Because we have to try and contextualize what, what everything um, so you're what looking everything at means. corruption not mm -hmm. necessarily scandal not yeah not necessarily scandal right okay. um, because a scandal could be a sex scandal it mm -hmm. could be anything else but we'd have to look at specific phrases um, um, specific phrases put together and backed up by perhaps other data sets mm -hmm. to then now amount to to various scandals were well, uh, you also scandals. picking yeah uh, information relating to action taken Mm -hmm. on corruption and were you able to segment so for example i can imagine if you're mm -hmm. even using eacc as your source yeah. or the asset recovery authority as your source then mm -hmm. you'd be able to, you are actually talking about cases that have gone have been taken to court yeah or the odpp as a source those mm -hmm. are cases that are being dealt with yes vis-a-vis -vis others that have not been dealt with yeah so that's that's the next phase um of what we intend to do mm -hmm. um that will produce perhaps much less and m not satisfying, but much less data than than um, what we have at this point in time, because mm. court cases are slow. A lot of them take years to be sorted out. Um, and 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 that, you know, essentially that's something that we're going to do mm. at, at, um, at, at a point in the future, just be able to disaggregate. And I think what we're looking at right now is the entire, you know, data set. The next, the next step for us is to to start looking. Okay, fine. Regime by regime, mm. what were these actual scandals? Can we put that in a way? Can we present it in a way that um, that Kenyans can appreciate? Okay, so this was a scandal and this wasn't. Then now we go to what action is being taken. Mm. Um, then you know um, we're also looking forward um, to 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 trying to track some of these scandals. Do you have any information about something that's possibly going wrong? Mm. Can you tell us about it um, for us to begin to to investigate the same? Mm. So that's um, in short, like that, you know, next one year um, to two years of what um, WYSIWYGS is going to look like. Um, a deepening of the data set and just a nuancing of it so that you can tell which from which. Mm. So for instance, if you click on a managed equipment leasing scheme scandal, then uh, there might be a progress pane that shows you okay it's been in court for three years mm. and um, the outcome is et, et cetera. Mm. yeah there i have so many questions running through my mind <laughs> okay. i'll just look at the numbers first of all yeah the worst year was 2014 mm -hmm. which saw um in fact the numbers three 367 billion yes. misappropriated yes we then have a spike in 2018 mm um that's also very high like 240 billion mm -hmm. um could you maybe just explain these two a little bit okay mm. so um 2014 is the end of the first year of the of the tenure of uh, uhuruto a lot of um infrastructure contracts then you know come into the fray and a lot of them seem to have been overinflated and etc et mm. mm. and begin to be flagged um, the same with the same with 2018. Right after the election, there, there seemed to have been a spike in terms of the, the kinds of projects um, related to infrastructure. I'd have to remember which other one um, there was, but there, there was a specific number of infrastructure projects that that took place in 2018. Then that also goes with land. Uh, yes, and land mm -hmm. as well. Um, and yes, and sorry, and but that land is more actually for 2014. Mm. Uh, if you remember mm -hmm. at that point in time, the Kenya railways um, were being put to task mm -hmm. over the the reclamation of land for the building of the the standard gauge railway, yep. mm -hmm. and there were claims of uh, especially from the National Lands Commission of in overinflated prices, mm -hmm. um, but also theft of land. Um, um, that and those cases were taken before the, the National Lands Commission. So that explains 
um, two of those spikes in 2018. I'll, I'll get it hopefully by the end of the show. Mm -hmm. But there's a specific number of scandals that um, that took place in 2018. That if I mention them, you will remember. Mm -hmm. But let me let me let me just mm -hmm. search and 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 try and jog my memory a little bit. But it also yeah. tells us something about regime trans transitions, yes, and corruption mm -hmm. and the need for us to be vigilant mm. and watch mm. so the deals are made mm. and the, the deals are possibly being made now the deals are being made the day before yesterday yes. you know <laughs> yes. yeah. if you are looking keenly yeah. yes yeah, yes yeah. okay yeah. you're obviously yeah. alluding to something i need to, <laughs> I need to be very eh? uh, you missed it <laughs> I, I must have missed it so I did i <laughs> John was a fly on the wall. Yes, we need to talk to John uh, Kando. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then also there's um, the the interesting thing about the private sector and mm. these ghost companies. Mm. Um, you know, we ha now 183 suspect ghosts mm. in terms of people, I think, mm -hmm. ghost people procuring. Yes. And then uh, two, uh, 89 ghost companies. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is outrageous. And then 80 agencies, I mm. imagine many of those would be the um, state-owned enterprises. Yes. You know, so the... And state-owned enterprises are a conduit for corruption. A oh, lot yeah. of the scandals go through there. Yeah. And these are areas where the scrutiny is pretty low. Mm. So I don't know what your take is in terms of this idea of beneficial ownership. It's is, is, it, is it a red herring? Is it... It hasn't gotten us anywhere. We've had a lot of talk. Mm. We haven't seen its rewards. Mm -hmm. And then maybe also your reflection on the state-owned enterprises. I think I think um, having having laws that that give more transparency about ultimate beneficial ownership, I think, is a good thing. To the extent that you you should be able, there should be traceability um, of who owns what in this country and how they tender. And, and I'm saying this for this reason. I'll give you an example from something that, that I personally was involved in investigating. A uh, former senator, um, very senior senator, has seven companies and some inside knowledge about a specific tender in government that he'd like to win mm. and and also the acquiescence of various people from the tender committee so mm. what does he do he comes and create he comes and and creates tender documents that that um, allow for one to be perhaps out of range in terms of the financial um, you know because you, know, you do technical yeah there's a technical there's a financial as well mm. so you have one that's too expensive you have one that technically doesn't have the right partners you yeah. have another one so it looks like the ten the tender committee is being presented mm. with uh, alternate bids. with al alternate bids mm. but it, the bids are coming from the same people yeah. what that person would do is use employees from his company and front them as owners of the business immediately the business um, immediately the tender is won then those cr12s are, are changed and revert back to, to um the to actual it, owner to the actual owner yes. so the abuse of things like agpo mm. um you know are, are really really important in understanding corruption where young people are supposed to be given opportunities but the power behind those young people mm. are really now these same old um tenderpreneurs and it speaks to a, a, a very in-depth understanding of how procurement works in this country, but also, I think, an understanding of the importance of political connections in, in not so much even in winning the tender, but just in being able to get the information about what's coming up, what's coming down the pipes, and perhaps even before that to create it. Now, on parastatals, I, I really don't know what else to say that, except that... Um, I know of a parastatal ad currently that is being led by somebody that is irredeemably corrupt, but not just corrupt, but incredibly forceful in in ensuring that is there's silence and acquiescence mm. in in that parastatal. So beyond there being low scrutiny, I think there's also a lot of a lot of intimidation that is taking place mm. i spoken to people there and they are so afraid of speaking out and try and cover and cover and cover their tracks that to the end the quality of the information that they give you isn't very good because mm. they know what they want to say they just can't say it mm. i think 
we we need to be very watchful of what happens in those state owned agencies and i think there has to be a a lot more accountability mm. um perhaps you know because all of them are subject to the same procurement laws in this country but perhaps there has to be some specific oversight on how funds um in parastatals are being um uh, appropriated mm. um and perhaps that the accounting officers i don't know whether not not accounting officers but the internal auditors should be able to either sit somewhere else or something i, I don't know internal what internal auditors should be external yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> there has to be Remote. something yeah. look at the kenya pipeline um co corporation company yeah. company company mm. look at the number of of scandals that took place between say 2014 mm. and 2019 mm. in the billions mm. and and the way it happens it, it happens in various ways so a there'll be someone internally who has contacts within the tender mm. a committee who has contacts to a um, to a, a contractor and that contractor then influences them and then at some point down the road we are told that the contractor doesn't have money to finish the projects that they are doing mm. right mm. and they start asking exchequer for more money or and which was really interesting um people go through a tender process win the tender both on financial and their technical bids are good but because the person um the other organization that they wanted to win doesn't win what do they do they go back withdraw the tender change the design mm -hmm. of the tender at one stage that gives advantage to mm -hmm. another organization mm. and kicks out these other ones so you look like you've been knocked out technically but these organizations are within their rights to do so yeah right but you know what game is being played so so many times corrupt individuals especially at parastatal uh, level but also elsewhere are very good at coloring within the lines mm. Mm. and knowing how to manipulate various stages of um, of tendering for instance to mm. to be able to advantage the people that they want advantage mm. yeah so it looks as though the system is pre-designed mm -hmm. we're, we're not even talking about let's wait until the harvest and then we all mm -hmm. share we're looking at you know at planting season mm -hmm. it has been designed so that mm -hmm. uh, the plowing, season. <laughs> the plowing mm -hmm. season it has been designed mm -hmm. so that this entire thing then uh, is taken the 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 heaviness though that weighs on the hearts of many as we hear these things as mm -hmm. we see these numbers even try to calculate them then is so what will be done and mm. i think my buzzword as we are going forward is mm. um participatory governance mm -hmm. and to say that how can then we who hear these numbers see who see these things who who compute and tabulate on it on a daily mm. how can we then be part of a process which undoes mm. the systemic thing that we are talking about that's that's a tough one and i don't have all the answers but i i do have um a suggestion mm. um that that and and um, i think people are getting a bit tired of hearing about makweni but i'll i'll give mm -hmm. this example this third tier of govern governance that um, that uh, the former governor introduced mm. is really what we should all aspire to public participation should not be something that's announced and just passes you understand it's not advertised for a meeting and exactly. then ends it 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 needs to be something that becomes a lot more how do i put this institutionalized well, yes mm. yes and 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 made such an so a, it's a permanent a, feature a permanent feature but such an important part of the process that mm. nothing can proceed until public participation takes place mm. and and all i'd say even more resources need to be dedicated to ensuring that people either follow it online or it's held in a place or at a time when people are able to participate mm. not to have it in the middle of of the week on a wednesday at 12 p.m or at 3 p.m when people are in their offices mm. and you only have a select number of people who are able to attend but more than that it's taking it using things like chiefs barazas yeah to to start to discuss these kinds of things because the 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 in as much as i i i i know that there are problems with what was then the pro provincial administration i think in the hands of of a, of a government that wants to serve the public institutions like those can be very important in inculcating the sense of public participation mm -hmm. um when it comes to these kinds of tenders and when people see that higher what i said is actually being is actually being implemented yeah. that gives a person the morale to go and say okay tomorrow 
this is what I want to happen. Mm. So even things like Nyumbakumi, etc. might have been used badly in the past. Mm. If you were to redesign government to make it more pe people-centered, mm. what are all of these things or all of these meetings that you're calling people to or all of these organizations mm. that you're calling people to be a part of, what do they actually do? So it's, it's really refocusing governance on the people mm -hmm. and making sure that they're in the driver's seat. The, 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 the problem with that is that things might happen a lot slower, yeah. right? But would you rather something that happens slowly, yep. but you get a you good process the front in the gear, You'll never pause exactly. at any point. You'll exactly. never reverse at any point. Yeah. Yeah. But then that also calls on goodwill, the political mm. goodwill of uh, the leaders that we elect. Mm. Because it doesn't sound like whatever kind of legislation we have now is mm. not sufficient. Mm. We have sufficient legislation that calls for public participation. The County Government Act mm. and all the other laws are talking about this. Mm. The institu institutionalization of this mm -hmm. and uh, making it a permanent feature mm. and a very integral part of development and conversations on development goes back to the leadership. Mm. So leadership at county level mm. and leadership in state house. Mm -hmm. So then it comes, it trickles down. Yeah. If, for example, President William Ruto demonstrates, like he has said now with CBC, I mm. want, I, he said on CBC, we've got to have public participation. Mm. I think this will be a litmus test and a show of what he intends yeah. uh, for us to see going forward. Mm. If the CBC public participation conversations actually lead up to something that people feel, oh yes, this is what we felt we wanted. And those that feel that, feel that what they said is was not factored in, but they are mm. given an explanation as to why, sets the tone for everything going forward. Yeah. Wajiru, make your comment before mm. we close this, we the need, hour. We need to move beyond mm. tokenism. Yes. And for public participation to be resourced, this is function 14 mm. uh, in the schedule, of the fourth schedule of the constitution. We need to put those documents, mm. the BQs, the procurement reports, the, um, the completion of, of a project mm. reports, and the final uh, go ahead to be in the hands of citizens. That's mm. what Makuweni did. Mm. They have a provision for citizen oversight in the procurement process. So mm. we have the models we need to push because we mm. possibly, we have some statements mm. that indicate goodwill, but we need to push. Mm. And I think maybe just be a lot more strategic yeah. in, in terms of how we um, advocate for the institutionalization. So we can't wait for political will. Mm. We need to create an environment that mm. pushes for mm. it. Mm. That's very well said. John Allen, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Asante Sander for coming. Thank you very much for having me. One last thing, I just want to say a, a shout out to Odanga Madum. He knows why. Um, related to Weezy Leaks. Um, and yeah, just follow our work and uh, let's keep on supporting each other. Yes. Kabisa. Odanga Madum, yeah. good morning and good job. Yeah. It's 9am. Spice up your life.